Hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. How are you today? Buenas noches. ¿Cómo están? It's Buenas noches, good teacher. evening, teacher. Dear participants, congratulations. We are about to finish our first week together. So welcome, Miguel. Welcome, Jessica, Carlos, Raquel, Joao, Vicky, Cindy, Joel, Victor, Natalia and Vladimir and welcome for the people that is going to join later. So for today, I'm going to continue showing the platform. We are going to conclude the exercises of the previous topic. We are going to close uh, showing the uses of simple present uh, tense. And then we are going to advance with vocabulary about furniture. So it means that today we are going to close the section number one but also we are going to start the section number two. Uh, so our goal is that, uh, I want to say that ne next week, as you know, we are on vacation. So we will come back until, um, let's see, eight, night, uh, on Monday, the August the 10th, right? On Monday, August the 10th, so we are going to come back. So we are going to have one week, week of vacation. It means that, our model uh, goes one week later, right, from the, from the plan. And um, uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to send you the link for the materials of the first week. And if you need any support, any um, request, uh, any, let's see, any uh, help in order to complete the platform uh, during vacation, so please let me know. Uh, I will be ready in the WhatsApp group. So the idea is that you can advance in the platform as much as you can, right? So if you want to go beyond and advance and advance more in the platform, there's no problem, you can do it and I can assist you if you need uh, or if you request support to solve some exercises. Okay, so let me show you the platform. So, Let me go here. Hello, hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Okay, yes. perfect. I want to show you the platform. So let me just uh, share with you. I just want you to see the platform part. Okay, uh, we are going to continue today, but I want to complete the knowledge check and I would like that you can, you can see it. So, okay, uh, in the knowledge check, um, after this section, uh, after this video of the simple present questions and conversation, I get up at noon. <coughs> Excuse me. I have here uh, the instructions. Unscramble the questions to complete the conversation. Write the questions in blank. So for example, do you get up, uh, do you exercise every day? So every day is one of the key words that we are going to learn uh, that we use in order to talk about simple present. And the answer, yes, I exercise every day. In, this, in the exercise number two, the challenge is to ask the question. You have to ask the question. So the answer is at 1 p.m. And here you have like, uh, you have to unscramble this, right? You, what time, lunch, do it. So if you see here, you have to start with the auxiliary in order to do the question. So the right uh, answer is, uh, in this case, you have also a WH word. So it means that the WH word goes first and then the auxiliary and then the main verb and then the complement. So the right uh, way to ask, ask this question is, what time do you eat lunch? Or you can write it in capitals. Uh, what time do you eat lunch? Capitals, right? Or uh, initial uh, capitals, all of them in small letters and in a dot. Or, or 
all of them in capitals at the end at that. So those are the all the possible ways of writing this answer. And I am teaching them because sometimes the platform is very sensitive. So if you don't do in the right way, you can make a mistake. So uh, wait a minute for me. Uh, let's see. Let me let me do this. So the next, let's see the next. Okay, can you watch my screen? Yes. Okay, number three says, no, this class starts at nine o'clock. So this is the answer I have. So you need to think about the possible way to order this at start does eight o'clock this class. So since we are asking a question, right? We have to answer uh, by, um, we have to create the question by writing the auxiliary first. For example, uh, does this class, and since this class is it, so I start saying, does this class start at eight o'clock? And if you see here, I don't have to add the letter S to the verb start because I have an auxiliary here. Does this class start at eight o'clock? So that's the question, right? As I said before, you can write a dot at the end. Uh, you can don't write a dot. Be careful with this o'clock, right? That this need, needs to be an apostrophe because if you, if you write another character, the platform is very sensitive and it can cause you a mistake. Uh, you can also um, write it in, in all capitals. Does this start at eight? Does this class start at eight o'clock with a, a dot at the end or without a dot? Next. Teacher, one. Eh, una, una consulta. Adelante. Y en este caso, yo los estuve resolviendo el día de ayer uh -huh. y estaba viendo que la plataforma es bastante como rigurosa a la hora de que si uno se equivoca o digamos pone una palabra, digamos que en dos palabras se ha equivocado ya se la corrige ahí que dice que está mal. Es, es bien complicado, solo lo que hice fue guiarme del, del ejemplo que, que tenía en el video, donde identificaba si empezaba con what o, o con das. Sí, es justamente por eso que yo decidí traerles las respuestas, ¿verdad? La intención no es como realizarles la tarea a ustedes, sino que lo que quiero es precisamente mostrarles eso. Todas las posibles formas de escribir la respuesta para que la plataforma se los tome como correcto. Eh, si ustedes hacen un pequeño error, eh, como es bien sensible y es programación, ¿verdad? Les va a dar error. Entonces, la ventaja es que ustedes pueden mandar varias veces el, el, el ejercicio ya resuelto. Entonces, por eso yo les estoy mostrando que ustedes pueden utilizar eh, todas eh, minúsculas, ¿verdad? Con, solo con la inicial mayúscula. Y aquí, por ejemplo, con, donde dice o'clock, asegurarse que están escribiendo el símbolo del apóstrofe y no el símbolo de, eh, eh, ¿cómo se llama? Eh, tildado, por ejemplo. Muchas veces eh, nuestros teclados eh, son un poquito complejos y no sabemos a dónde está el apóstrofe y utilizamos una tilde, ¿verdad? Sí, Pero de hecho, este... Lick, el, Lick, uh -huh. el, el, tal vez curso anterior, yo tuve muchos problemas con eso, con el apóstrofe porque en mi, en mi laptop no sabía cómo sacarlo. Entonces, lo que a mí me tocó fue que en internet tuve que poner apóstrofe y lo copiaba y lo pegaba y después de eso ya tuve un, un mejor, como, digamos, como control de, de ese tipo. Al igual, en realidad, con mayúsculas y minúsculas, la plataforma no, no hace como referencia, en realidad. Exacto. Lo puedes colocar en minúscula o en mayúscula, porque yo pensé que hasta eso era, pero en realidad a veces es ese, ese símbolo que es muy importante se debe de colocar de la forma correcta. Exactamente. Eh, con lo que dice el compañero, porque el día de ayer me estuve dando, ¿verdad? Que no, no sabía cómo iba y era el apóstrofe que me estaba fallando. Ya lo había resuelto bien y lo volví a leer y seguía la regla y el apóstrofe era el que... Y que me fallaba, pero al final sí me puede dar cuenta que era eso. Exactamente. Y vean que en este ejercicio, aunque me tarde un poquito más, gracias compañeros por los aportes. Eso es importante, ¿verdad? Para que evitemos, eh, con, la, con base a la experiencia de otros, cometer los mismos errorcillos de escritura. Vean acá, como yo ya tengo el question mark, 
aquí, entonces significa que yo ya no lo tengo que, que escribir en el espacio, porque si yo escribo, o otro question mark me va a dar error. ¿Por qué razón? Porque ya lo tengo acá. Entonces, aunque yo sé que es una question, es una pregunta, pero como ya el question mark está escrito, entonces, if I write it, I duplicate. Si lo escribo de nuevo, se duplica entonces la plataforma, aunque yo haya escrito de manera correcta, como están aquí todas las posibles formas, me va a dar error. Entonces hay que tener bastante cuidado, como ya decían los compañeros. Ok, excelente. So, now, next one. Eh, yes, we play soccer on Saturdays, right? Eh, ah, perdón. Eh, no, me salté, me salté una. La siguiente, I study English in the evening. Esa es la respuesta que tengo, ¿verdad? Y luego tengo aquí revuelto. I have a mixed. When, I mean, study you English do when, ¿ok? Entonces utilizo when at the beginning, right? Eh, and then I say, um, when do you study English, right? When the auxiliary verb do, then the subject, you, study the main verb, English. When do you study English? Or when do you study English without a dot or all capitals with a dot or all capitals without a dot? The next one, it says, yes, we play soccer on Saturdays. So we have here mixed, on weekends, you and your friends do play sports. So I have to put in order again, and I see that it's a question. So if it's a question, I have to add an auxiliary at the beginning, because I don't have a WH. La primera cosa que hago es ver si tengo una WH, ¿verdad? Como en los casos de arriba, que yo tenía una WH word, la WH word va primero, goes first. But if I don't have a double H, I have do at the beginning. Do you, do you and your friends play sports on weekends? So that's the question, right? You can write it all small letters with a dot, all capitals with a dot, without a dot or all capitals with a dot at the end. Okay, one uh, eleven. Uh, says by the end of this class you will develop skills in predicting, scanning, and sequencing events after reading and discussing and discussing three interviews about schedules, right? So before we do this, I want to show you my uh, yes, I have here. Okay, uh, can you watch my screen? Pueden ver mi, mi nueva pantalla? Yes. yes, yes, teacher. Okay, okay. Before we go to that exercise, I want to show you that as it is in the platform in the videos, you will learn that we use the simple present tense in order to talk about habits or regular actions or situations. I want you to ignore this part. Quiero que por ahora ignoremos la parte del presente continuo porque no lo vamos a trabajar, ¿verdad? Lo traje nada más como para... Eh, que ustedes vieran un poquito, pero en realidad lo que me interesa que vean es el present simple or simple present, right? What we use it for? ¿Para qué lo utilizamos? So, we use simple present to talk about habits or regular actions or situations. For example, I wash my, hand, my hair every day. Every day means todos los días, so that's an habit. It's a regular activity that I do almost every day. He usually gets up very early, right? I use also simple present to talk about facts or permanent situations or states. For example, I have one brother. He lives in Paris. That's a very permanent situation, right? Es bastante permanente el hecho de tener un hermano y que, y que viva en París, ¿verdad? The other is a fact. Un fact es un hecho. It's, it's scientifically uh, proved. Científicamente probado, ¿verdad? Water boils at 100 degrees. I'm back, sorry. Okay, so, uh, let's see. Let's go again. Okay. Can you watch it again? ¿Lo podemos ver de nuevo? Sí, ¿verdad? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. The next one. With stative verbs, what is a stative verb? Que es un verbo stative, right? 
So uh, they are verbs that we use to talk about the senses. Verbos que utilizamos para hablar de los sentidos, ¿verdad? Uh, for example, hear, escuchar, see, ver, smell, oler, look, mirar, seem, parecer, sound, sonar, or to give opinion. Believe, creer, consider, considerar, like, es gustar, love, amar, hate, odiar, prefer, preferir, think, pensar. Or to talk about possessions, for example, have, tener, own, pertenecer. También belong es pertenecer, ¿verdad? They are like synonyms. Also, agree, estar de acuerdo, be, ser o estar, depend, depender. Need, necesitar, mean, significar, remember, recordar, realize, darse cuenta, recognize, reconocer, seem, parecer, want, querer. So, um, those are stated verbs. So, for example, give me the money. I need it now. What happened? You look sad. Okay? Future timetable events. We use the simple present also to talk about future timetable events. ¿Qué significa timetable events? Eventos futuros pero que ya están programados, ¿verdad? Que son casi actividades regulares. The train leaves at four. It means every day the train leaves at four. The exams start ne next Monday. So it's a future activity, but it's something that remains eh, almost all the time. Uh, the signal words in order to see that we are talking about simple present are always, never, often, sometimes, every day, once a month. Later you will learn that always, never, and often, and sometimes they are also frequency adverbs, right? So we are going to study that topic later. Okay, so uh, do you have questions about how to use simple present? ¿Tenemos preguntas acerca del de uso que hacemos para el presente simple? ¿Verdad? Ya dijimos que nos sirve para hablar de hábitos o acciones que hacemos de forma regular, hechos o situaciones en, o estados permanentes, con verbos clave que hablan de los sentidos, de opinión, de, de posición, eh, como los que están ahí. También eh, cuando hablamos de... Eh, eventos que ya están programados, ¿verdad? Y las palabras clave que vamos a encontrar cuando hablamos de presente, always, siempre, never, nunca, often, a menudo, sometimes, algunas veces, every day, todos los días, once a month, una vez al mes, etc. So, I'm going to stop sharing and I will go back to the platform. So, okay, here we have an exercise. Another knowledge check. Aquí tenemos otro knowledge check, ¿verdad? That says, okay, after the knowledge check, we have the sequence events. And here, let me see. Yes, that's the one we already saw. Okay, what, what are the sequence events? What is your schedule like? El simple present también nos sirve para hablar de schedules, de eventos en secuencia, ¿verdad? For example, Mike says, uh, Mike is asking to Brittany, uh, what's your schedule like? I said, what's your schedule like is, ¿cómo es tu rutina o tu agenda diaria, verdad? And Brittany says, my classes start at 8 a.m., so I get up at 7 and take the bus to school. When do, when do your classes end? They end at noon. Then I have a job at the library. So when do you study? My, my only time to study is, and then, the conversation continues. So you have this video in the platform, uh, the conversation between, between Mike and Brittany, between Mike and Joshua, and between Mike and Maya. So all of them describe what is their schedule like, right? This word is a little bit tricky to, to pronounce, to, the pronunciation, how to pronounce is schedule. So this is like a K, schedule, right? So, uh, in this case, the, the knowledge check says that you have to read each of the three articles and then you have to number the order of the activities that each person do, right, from one to five. So, in the case of Brittany Davis, 
She says that first she gets up, right? So that's number one. Number two, she takes the bus. Number three, she goes to class. Number four, she works. In number five, she studies. So if you see, we are talking about Brittany. So Brittany is a third person, is she. So when we talk about her, we use the third person singular rule for the simple present with a verb. And we say, she goes, she takes, she works, she studies, she gets up. It happens the same with Joshua. So you have to read the schedule of Joshua and then answer the the, 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 the same question, right? Which is the order of the actions. So first, Joshua goes, he goes for a run, right? Then, no, excuse me. First, she gets up, right? Then, after she gets up, she goes for a run. Then, number three, she starts, uh, he has breakfast. Then, number four, he starts uh, work. Number five, he gets up. And finally, we have Maya Black. Maya Black is a rock musician. And um, let's see, she has dinner, right? And, and different, that, that there's a mix, right? So you need to look for the right order. So that's the, the logic of this exercise. Uh, so do you have questions so far? Tenemos preguntas hasta aquí? Hello? No questions? No hay preguntas? Ok, los oigo calladitos, pero ustedes se pueden quitar el mute si tienen alguna pregunta, ¿verdad? No hay problema. Ok, let's see. Can you watch my screen now? Pueden ver mi pantalla ahora? Hola, hola. Alguien me puede confirmar si pueden ver mi pantalla? Hola. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Hola, hola chicos, ¿me pueden escuchar? Hola, hola. Hello. Hola, hola chicos, ¿me pueden escuchar? Hello. 
Hello. Can you hear me? 